John and I have been working together for a number of years now, creating new uh, multimedia drama from classic texts and archives that we delve into. We're particularly interested in how music and sound can work together with a sense of parity, aren't we? Well, that's one of the things I really like about working with Cathy is uh, the way that we're both interested in text and music having equal weight and uh, sharing the load of the storytelling. And that meant we were pretty excited to have a go at The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov, a Russian playwright. Uh, this is his last play, written in 1903, with an uncanny foresight for what was about to happen in Europe. There's a sense of the impending Russian Revolution, the First World War, and certainly the characters are sensing that nothing is ever going to be the same again. And given the world we're living in at the moment, this seems um, prescient. For me, the really exciting thing about The Cherry Orchard is the text is full of music and sound. Characters sing to each other, they serenade each other with guitars, they dance to the local band. But the most interesting moment is when Chekhov asks for a sound that four characters hear but interpret in completely different ways. And that was a springboard for us to interrogate the play and interpret Chekhov's intention through word, sound and music. And here it is. The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov. Trains arrived, Dunyasha. <clears throat> Sun's up. That's how late they are. Oh, what an idiot I am! I should have been on the platform. Why didn't you wake me? Don't blame me, La Parkin. I was down in the kitchen. I thought you'd gone. Oh, is that them now? No, it's just the wind. Oh, they'll come in the carriage, you stupid. You think it'll have changed much? In five years, Ranievskia. I remember her stroking my face when I was 15. After Dad punched me, the stupid drunk. She took me in here and wiped the blood away. She was so beautiful, so slim. I hardly dared to breathe. She told me not to cry and called me a peasant. I should be 50-something now. Well, I was a peasant. And I might have money coming out of my ears, but I'm still a peasant. Oh, I try to read, but it sends me to sleep. I'm a stupid peasant. A very rich, very stupid peasant. Ranievsky's dogs know she's coming back to them. 
My hands are trembling. I think I'm going to faint. What the bloody hell is wrong with you, Dunyasha? With your airs and graces? Get over yourself, will you? And sort your hair out. You look ridiculous. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. The gardeners cut these pretty branches, Dunyasha. Oh. For you. For the dining room. The first blossom. Oh! oh. Sorry. Oh, what a mess of petals. Let me... Uh, oh, sorry. They're beautiful, Yepikado. Thank you. I'll fetch a nice big vase. Get me a drink while you're at it. Certainly, sir. It'll be freezing out there, Leparky. Spring this ain't. <laughs> yeah, sorry about these boots. What would you do with this squeak? Uh, wax in there? Grease them. Do be quiet, you be cut off. I'm a disaster. I'm a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I'd better be off. Uh, oh, no! Oh, 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 uh, I'm so sorry, Dunyasha. You idiot, you be cut off. You see? You see, like clockwork, what's a man to do? Sorry, Dunyasha, sorry. Mm -hmm. Are you all right clearing that up? You know, don't cut yourself. Oh. Uh, was it valuable? Uh, sorry, oh, what a mess. It's all sticky. I'm sorry. Oh, clear out, why don't you? Scram! Yes. I'll go, if you think that's best. Take the blasted dogs with you. And watch out for their paws on that broken glass. Idiot. Kodos proposed to me. Mm. I don't know what to do. He's so nice, but I really can't follow a word he says. He witters on and on and on, and I lose track. He's sweet and he adores me and all that, but he's a one-man disaster zone. That's what we call him in the kitchen, disaster zone. <laughs> They're here. Are they? I feel strange, not quite right. Will she remember me? Oh, I'm trembling. I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> Ta da! Oh, come on in. Come on in, everyone. I can't believe it's been five weeks. Hello? Hello, hello? Five weeks for you, my oh. sweet Anya. Five years for me. Well, we're home now. Look, Mama, we've kept everything as you left it. Oh, the nursery. My nursery, Anya. Your nursery too, darling. And Baria. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're a wonder. Yes, well, it's blimming freezing oh. out there. My fingers are blue with the waiting. I've kept your rooms just as you left them, Mama. White and violet. Curtsy, Dunyasha. You oh. oh. Mom, I slept in this very room when I was a little girl. But how like a nun you look, Varia, with that scarf around your head. Take it off this instant. You've not changed a bit. And you, you must be little Dunyasha. <laughs> My, how you've grown. Oh, coming out of the cold, Gaev, and shut that door. Renyevsky, is it a parking? Is it not? Yes, that's right. We were two bloody hours waiting on that platform, weren't we, Varia Pet? I am frozen. This country's going to the dogs. So bring the bags this way, Yasha. Is it? That's a snappy get-up. Come on in, Charlotte, and you, Pichik, you silly old fool. In! You're letting out all of the heat. Shall I follow you, Varia, dearest? Yes, come along. Come out this way. This way. And you, Uncle Guy. Oh, chop, chop. Bossy madam, isn't she? My niece. Uh, who's going to help me with this? Oh, do come along, Yasha. Le Parkin, give him a hand, will you? With pleasure. Here, I'll take this end. <laughs> Mad dog eats naps, Pichik, and does tricks. Did you know that? Really, Charlotte? Are you sure? Oh, I'm quite... I've got so much to tell you, Anya. Oh, I haven't slept for four nights on the truck, do you, Esther? I'm frozen through. Help me undo this, will you? I couldn't wait for you to come back. 
You've been gone so long. I can't wait another minute to tell you. Another proposal? <laughs> I can't keep up. Yes, how did you guess? Yepikodov, Easter oh. week. You know, the clerk? Disaster zone. God, I'm tired. All my hairpins have dropped out. I can hardly see straight. I'm so exhausted. I need to go to bed. He's madly in love with me, Anya. And when I wake up in the morning, I shall run straight out into the orchard. But first, I must sleep. It is terrifying how much I need to sleep. I, I long to sleep. Peter's here. Uh, Peter? Peter's here? Mm-hmm. Well, where? He's in the summer house. Oh, he's moved in there. Doesn't want to be in the way. I was going to wake him up, but your sister said not to. Oh, speak of the devil. Oh. And she shall appear. Dunyasha, go and bring some coffee for Mama. In a minute. We're having a chat. Now. Please. <sighs> Home again, my pretty little Anya. <laughs> oh, I've missed you so much. Oh, it's been dreadful, Varya. Simply dreadful. I'm sure it has, but you're home now. Why on earth you inflicted that Charlotte on me? I'll never know. I'm too old for a governess. She's only four years older than me anyhow. She kept doing magic tricks with her little dog. I thought I was going mad. You couldn't travel alone, darling. Oh, it was only five weeks. It would have been fine. Not at 17. Not in Paris. Paris was covered in snow. I found Mama on the top floor of this big house. She was surrounded by men and a Catholic priest reading from a book, and I couldn't understand a single word anyone was saying. The place was full of smoke. I got hold of Mama, and I shook her, and I wouldn't let her go. She was crying and crying and kissing me. Please, that's enough. I can't bear it. <sighs> Poor Mama. Five years away from us. From home. Well, she sold the house at Monton, Varia. That much I know. But she's still got nothing. Nothing at all. It all went to pay her debt. How we managed to get home with no money is nothing short of a miracle. Mm. And Mama doesn't seem to understand. She keeps ordering the most expensive things and tipping all the waiters. And oh, Charlotte's just as bad. And bloody Yasha kept demanding a bonus, if you can believe it. Very flashy, thinks he is, now he's lived in Paris. It's just too awful. Mm, I saw his ridiculous outfit. Dreadful. Have you paid the mortgage? What with? With nothing to pay it with. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're going to auction in August. No, no, please, no. <laughs> Get out! The parking you owe! <laughs> Has the parking proposed yet? Uh, no. But he loves you, doesn't he, Varia? What's he waiting for? I don't think it will come to anything. Le Parkin's a busy man. Sometimes I think he barely notices me at all. <sighs> to hell with him. I can't bear to look at him. Everyone bangs on about our marriage, but it's nothing but an idle dream. A mirage. <laughs> Is that brooch in the shape of a bee? Another of Mama's fancies. When I was in Paris, I went up in a hot air balloon... Here we go. Thank you, Dunyasha. Now, unpack this case. Well, I'm so glad you're back, Anya. I trudge about all day doing my endless chores, wondering what is to become of us. Could you bring yourself to marry someone rich, Anya? Could you? I'd go off on a retreat and then on to Moscow. A pilgrimage. Oh, I'd love that. The birds are making a racket. Time for bed. Let's get you tucked in. Don't dawdle, Dunyasha. Mum? Oh, <laughs> requesting permission to pass, mademoiselle. Yes, sir. Is that you? Why are you wearing that uniform? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I'm Dunyasha, you silly. Little Dunyasha. Surely you remember me. I, I mm. remember you. <laughs> Not so little anymore. Come here, you. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> See you around, Dunyasha. What's going on in here? 
Who was that? Nothing, Varia. No one at all. I, uh, I broke a cup. Sorry. <laughs> That's good luck, I think. Oh, I can't sleep. We need to tell Mama that Peter is here. We have to. I told Dunyasha not to wake him. He'll remind her of Grisha and why she ran away and never looked back. It wasn't Peter's fault. She knows that. It wasn't anybody's fault. It was the river's fault. It was the river that drowned him. Grisha would be 13 this year if he'd lived. Not seven. My mistress will take her coffee in this chair, I think. Dunyasha, what are you doing crawling around down there? Where's the cream? I'll fetch it now, Fierce. Fierce. Twerp. Silly twerp. But my Ranieskia's home from Paris. The master used to travel to Paris by carriage. Dead and gone these six years. That's enough, Fierce. What do you want, Varya? Ranievskia's returned. I will die a happy man. What was your catchphrase, Gaia? Oh, yes. I remember. Yellow into the corner pocket. And ship the red in the right-hand top. <laughs> Once upon a time, we slept in here in tiny cots. And now I'm 51, Rani's mm. here. 51. Your silly little brother is 51. Time flies when all you do is have fun. What's that? What did Le Parkin say, Pichon? He said, time flies when you're having fun, I think. What's that smell, Le Parkin? Hair oil. I'm <laughs> off to bed. Again. Oh. Are you pleased to be home, Anya, darling? I don't know if I'm coming or going. Yes, Mama. Very pleased. <laughs> Good night, Uncle Gaia. You're the spitting image of your mother, Anya. Remarkable. Oh. She could be you at 17, Renyevsky. Really, she could. Oh, stop mourning, Anya, Gaia, and let her go to bed. Can't you see how tired she is? Come on, gentlemen. Time you are off. Chop, chop. And you should be getting home, Pichu. Uh, yes, yes. Off I trot. Anya, uh, I've already tucked you in once. Shoo! <laughs> just have a drop more coffee before I go, if I may. Good for the heart. What a little tartar my daughter is. I don't know where you get it from, Varia. Certainly not from me. I'll just finish my coffee and off we'll go. Oh, fears. Thank you, you darling. Wonderful man. That's much more comfortable. You think of everything. Pleasure, my lady. <laughs> I drink coffee morning, noon and night. Can't stop myself. My brother's just as bad, aren't you, Gaia? Guilty as charged, and Pishik positively runs on it. <laughs> Brother. Well, I'll go and oversee the unpacking, then. Don't stay up too long, Mama. Mm. Gentlemen, good night. Good night, sweet lady. I'm not going to bed. There's work to be done, the parking. Oh, can it really be me that is sitting here in my house after all this time? I keep having to pinch myself. It's all so unreal. Am I dreaming? Am I dead? No. <laughs> God knows I love my country. I could hardly stay out the window of the train as we hurtled back. I was crying so hard. But I must drink my coffee. <clears throat> Thank you, Fierce. Darling man. I'm so glad to find you here. Alive. The day before yesterday, my lady. <laughs> He's deaf as a post, Fears is. Funny old thing. I have to dash in a minute for the train. I had wanted to stay a while and stare at you. You're as splendid as you always were. Isn't she, Pichic? <laughs> Prettier than ever and dressed as a Parisian. I think my heart will explode. Yes, yes, yes. People say I'm a snob, a gold-digging peasant, but I couldn't give a row of beans about all that. I just want you to look at me like you used to, with those eyes. <laughs> Dear God, my father was your father's slave. But you've done so much for me, I forgive you all of that. Oh, I can't sit still. I simply can't. Can one be too happy? Old Nursey died whilst you were away. Yes, I know. The estate's to be sold on the 22nd of August, but I think I've got a plan to save the house, I mean. We're only 15 miles from town. The railway's right here. We're going to carve up little parcels of land beside the river and sell them off as building plots for summer villas. You'll make a fortune. What do you say? What nonsense. 
I don't understand. Come the autumn, you won't have a clod of earth left. All snapped up, gone. You're saved. It's a first-class site with a good deep river. All we have to do is clear the ground, knock down the outbuildings and chop the cherry orchard down. Did you just say chop our cherry orchard down, Leparkin? Yes, I did. You don't know what you're talking about. The cherry orchard is remarkable. It's rare. It's unique. The only remarkable, rare and unique thing about it is its size. So big the fruit rots on the trees. It has an annotated entry in the encyclopaedia our cherry orchard does. It's our only option, Gaeth. Or come August, you lose the lot, house and all. Back in the old days, we used to dry the cherries. We preserved them. They're sour, you see. They have to be dealt with. Shut up, Fierce. We sent them by wagon to Moscow. Made a packet. Once we preserved them, the cherries were soft and sweet. In the old days. Why not now? Nobody remembers how to do it. How was Paris, dear lady? Did you gorge on frogs' legs? Crocodiles, Pichic. Crocodiles. (laughs) You used to be rich or you used to be poor. Now there's the in-betweeners. Towns are surrounded with holiday villas. It's the done thing to sit on your veranda drinking tea. But who knows, maybe in a few years people will be market gardening, making the land profitable once more. Tosh. Here. Make yourself useful, Yasha. Hold this. May we? What was that, Yasha? French. Whatever next. I forgot to give you these, Mama. Oh, telegrams? Hmm. From Paris. Oh, I'm done with Paris. Uh, but wait. Guess how old this dresser is, Pichy. It's been branded here with a poker. I spotted it the other day. There, look. Hold this, Yasha. What do you think of that, Pichy? 100 years old, exactly. Oh, no, nearly as old as fears. I beg your pardon, Yasha. For 100 years, this lump of wood has silently upheld books. Books containing noble ideals of justice and, and virtue. It has educated my family, given us courage to hope that there will be a better future. A future full of goodness and social consciousness. If you say so, Gaev. Oh, Gaev, just the same, Leparkin, just the same. Off the white in the corner, screw into middle pocket, like so. <laughs> Three minutes to my train. Time for your medication, madame. You oh. really shouldn't, you glorious creature. Give those pills to me, I'll dispatch them. <laughs> gone. Oh. Are you quite out of your mind, PC? Oh, gone. Pig. <laughs> He swallowed the lot. He ate all the pickles at Easter. <laughs> what did you say, Fierce Darling? He's been mumbling like that for years now. Nobody listens to him. Geriatric. Toddle off, Yasha. There's a sport. You smell of chicken. You're the same as you always were, Gaia. What's that? What did he say, Varia? Your mother's come up from the village, Yasha. <laughs> She's been waiting for you since yesterday. In the hall. What a bore. You should be ashamed of yourself. Couldn't she have waited till tomorrow? It is passing through, as you were. Hello there, Charlotte. Let, let me... No, if I allow you to kiss my hand, Leparkin, then it will be my elbow, then my shoulder, and then where will we be? Well, let's have a magic trick instead. Oh, yes, a trick. A trick, Charlotte. Oh, no, thanks. I'm off to bed. Oh. Oh, now that really is my train. I must fly. I'll be back in three weeks, Ranievsky. Think about my villa plan, do... And if you do decide to go for it, I'll lend you the 50000 on the spot. Oh, for Christ's sake, Leparkin, just go. I'm going, dearest Varia. I'm going. Oh, how crass he is. But I forget, Leparkin's going to marry you, isn't he, Varia? He's Varia's young man. Not so very young, but a capital man, nonetheless capital. My daughter, she says... What does she say? Oh, I forget. (gasps) But, my dear Ranievsky, I I haven't been. You'll lend me a couple of hundred, won't you, to pay my mortgage? We can't, Pishik. 
Of course we can't. We can't even pay our own. The fact of the matter is I haven't any money. Oh, something will turn up. It always does. Last time I thought I was done for, they ran a railway over my land and paid me compensation. We bought a lottery ticket this week. We'll hit the jackpot. I know it. Oh, I've finished my coffee, so let's go to bed. Oh, Pishik, home time. Those trousers don't match that jacket, sir. What <laughs> am I to do with you? The sun on the orchard is heavenly, Mama. Mm. The blossom smells so sweet. I finally warmed up, I think. <laughs> it's pure white, and the avenue through the trees, straight as an arrow. Do you remember, Agnieszka? Oh, how happy we were when we were little. It looked just as it does now. Nothing changes. It's white, pure white. Oh, my cherry orchard. It must be sold to pay our debt. <gasps> I see Mama. Look, I see her in the orchard in a, in a white dress. She's there. Where? Where? <laughs> For God's sake, Mama, please, please don't. Oh, no. There's no one there. <laughs> It's just a tree that looks like a woman. A white tree against a blue sky. <laughs> Madame? Yes? Do I know you? I just wanted to say hello and then leave. They told me to wait, but I couldn't. It's Peter, Mama. Gracious, Tito. Have I changed so much? Oh. <laughs> oh, come, come, Ranieski. Stop crying. That's enough. I should go. I told you to wait in the summer house. Oh, my little boy, my Grisha, my son. Shh. There's nothing we can do now. Nothing. I'm so sorry. I'm so very sorry. He drowned. <laughs> my beautiful boy drowned. Why? Why? <gasps> oh. But I, but I must be quiet. Aren't you asleep? <laughs> oh, but Peter, why are you so old? You look old. You're, you're nearly bald. I feel <laughs> old. You were just a boy yourself, but now your hair is thinning. Are you really still a student? Sometimes I even wear spectacles. <laughs> yes, I'm what they call a perpetual student. Oh well, off to bed. One and all. Yes. Off my trot. Oh, my gout. I'll stay the night here, I think. Don't forget my money on the morrow, Angel. Oh, honestly, my sweet pea I don't have it. I'll pay you back, dearest. You know I'm good for it. My brother will pay you. Give it to him, please, Gaia. Uh, with pleasure. On the chin or the nose. Pea needs it. And so do we. Money runs through my sister's fingers like water. Mama hasn't changed a bit. She'd give the coat off her own back if somebody needed it. When there are multiple cures for an illness, it generally turns out to be terminal varia. Oh, my head hurts with options. Perhaps someone will die and leave us their fortune. Perhaps Anya will marry a filthy rich man. Perhaps I'll try my luck with the Countess. And there's one rich aunt. Perhaps I'll do that, yes. Please, God, help us. Auntie might be rich, but she dislikes us intensely because Ranievskia married a commoner. There's no good pretending my sister's lived a virtuous life. She's charming and all, and I love her to bits, but a more sinful creature would be difficult to find. Her daughter is standing right behind you. What's that you say, Varya? Oh, dear, I, I've got something in my eye. Uh, last Thursday, when I was I in... I thought uh, you were asleep, Anya. Well, I'm not. I can't. Not with all this racket and these thin walls. Oh, little darling, angel child, come here, my everything. You mustn't speak like that of Mama, Uncle Gaev. Your own sister. Where's the good in that? You're right. God, I'm awful. Stupid. Perhaps I've got a screw loose blithering on about bits of furniture. Stupid. Just try and control yourself. That's all that's required. You'd be so much happier if you did. You're absolutely right. I'll keep shut But in town, some other landowners were chatting, and we've cooked up a plan. 
I reckon I can get us alone. Heaven help us. Why do you keep turning to him up above, Varya? Stop that. How? Alone? How? But never mind that, Anya. I have a plan. Your mother will have a little chat with Lepark and you'll woo the Countess, Anya, and I'll secure a loan. Done. I swear on my honour, the estate will remain intact. I believe in happiness. So call me a traitor if we go to auction. I shall pull this off. What a dear, clever uncle you are. When are you going to bed, sir? It's so very late. Now. You shove off, fears. I'll undress myself. Look, we'll thrash out the details tomorrow. To bed now, one and all. I'm a liberal. A child of the 70s. Damn kind to my peasants and don't they just know it. Got me in this tight squeeze now they have. They, they really ought. Gosh, now, don't speak like that. Please, Uncle, please. Sir, I really must insist. To bed. Right ho, off we pop. Ricochet off the cushion and into the middle pocket. We'll begin again. We will. We will. Good old Uncle Guy. <laughs> Always has a plan. I'm not sure if I'm the right person to speak to the Countess. She scares me. You should do it, Varya. Oh, but no, we won't think of that till tomorrow. Whilst you were away, there was a bit of a scene. Mm. The servants, the ancient ones, have taken to welcoming in every passing tramp. And now they're spreading rumours that I only give them mushy peas to eat. I saw Red. I did. I said for what's-his-name and I told him, Look here, you old imbecile. How dare you! <laughs> Anya? Oh, you're asleep. <laughs> Come on, little Bobbit. Let's get you to bed. I wanted to say to Anya. No, Peter. Shh. She's asleep now. Tomorrow. Oh, I'm so very tired. Is that the bells from the coach? Uncle Gaev? Mama? Grisha? Uncle Gaev? Hush now. Come along. Come. Anya, my sunshine, my spring. I have no idea how old I am. I don't have a passport. But I think I'm young. I remember being very little and doing tricks at fairs before Mama and Papa left me with the German. I don't think they were married. They died, I think. So I have to be a governess. What else is there? God, I'm lonely. I have nobody to talk to. <laughs> what is this world to me? Who are friends and who enemies? Don't you just love the mandolin, Dunyasha? It's a guitar, Yepikodov. Do I look fetching with the sun behind me? Why can't you love me like I love you? Why can't you love me like I love you? What a dear. 
Was Paris wonderful, Yasha? Of course it was. It was Paris. <laughs> For all my education has done me, I haven't the first clue how to proceed. Why don't I just shoot myself now and I'm done with it? <laughs> Never knowingly without my pistol. What do you reckon, Charlotte? She's a beauty, isn't she? Oh, what a horrid little thing. Mm. If you insist on blowing your brains out, what you want is a proper gun like this. <laughs> Mine's a Holland and Holland. Lovely. You're a bit scary, aren't you, Yepikodov? That women fall at your feet. A little stupid for my liking. But we enter this world alone, and so <clears throat> I take my leave. <laughs> She's odd, isn't she? The governess. But who am I to talk? I'm like a reed in the wind, blown this way and that. Why am I the one that wakes up with a ruddy great spider squatting on his chest? What's your point, Yepikodov? May I speak with you alone, Dunyasha? Please. Yes. But go and get my coat first. It's back at the house. Right, oh. <laughs> oh, what an idiot that man is. What if he really does shoot himself? Yasha! Over me! Come here. Sit on my lap. Proper little tart, didn't Yasha? I think I love you, Yasha. Steady on. I don't want to be caught canoodling with you, Dunyasha. Scram. Pretend you've been swimming in the river. But they'll smell your smoke on me. Get lost. You two are going to have to make up your minds, and pronto, are we going to sell the land off or not? Yes or no, Ranievsky? Let me count my worldly wealth with my purse. <laughs> Who's been smoking? Yasha? Most convenient, the railway is, Ranievsky. Hop back and forth to town, oh. red in the middle. I shall go in and have a game. Answer the question, Gaia. Oh, where's all my money gone? Oh, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, silly me. Pennies from heaven, oh. Oh, that's so pretty, winking in the grass. Allow me, madame. Oh, aren't you eagle-eyed, Yasha? Thank you. Well, I don't like popping into town with you, guy. If you talk too much, you eat too much, you drink too much. Who do you think you're bored on to about the roaring 70s? The waiters. That's who. And why not? Uh, Yasha, get up. It's unseemly grubbing <laughs> around for money in the dirt. <laughs> I can't look at you without laughing, Guy. I'm sorry. I am warning you. Run along now, Yasha. <laughs> madame. I've heard of a man with pots of money who'd like to buy your whole estate, including the house. Heard, Leparkin. Where? In town. No need. Auntie to the rescue. To what tune? I beg your pardon. How much, Guy? Ten thousand? Twenty thousand? It will go for at least that. <laughs> One thousand tops. Your whole place is going to be sold, and you are not listening to a word I say. I have a plan. Tell us what to do, then. Every day I tell you to, and every day you don't listen. You have to sell the land to save the house. The cherry orchard must go. They'll build ten villas per acre. Oh, please, Park in villas. It's all so very vulgar. Agree. Oh, I give up. Off the cushion and into the corner. <laughs> I have been very sinful. And I have eaten too many sweets. Money pours through my fingers in a flood. I married a man who sprouted debt. He drank himself to death on champagne. I hurled myself at a useless cad. And to atone for my many sins, my little boy was drowned. Drowned. And I fled from this river, far, far away. And the cad followed. He hunted me down and bled me dry. Like a deer shot in the heart. He strung me up in Montau. He strung me up in Paris. He strung me up. He left me swinging. 
and he shacked up with a whore. I tried to die. I was so humiliated. But but Russia called me, called me back. So please don't punish me any more than I already have been, Leparkin. I don't think I can bear it. Is that music or the river I can hear? The music, not the river. <sighs> we must hold a dance. I can't hear anything. Yeah, I saw a play last night in town. It was funny. I bet you it wasn't, the Parker. Not really. You ought to watch plays about your own kind. See how dull you really are. You're quite right. We're a bunch of imbeciles. My father understood nothing. He taught me nothing. All he did was beat me to within an inch of my life. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm no better than a pig. Well, you should get married, Leparkin. Yes. You should marry Varia. That's what you should do. Yes, I should. She loves you. Yes, she does. I've had a job offer. In a bank. <laughs> what? Did Guy have to say he's employed? We did do that. Sir, put this on. You will catch a chill. What a pest you are, Fierce. So you've suddenly become ancient, Fierce, darling. I'm as ancient as the hills. I've been around forever. I was a serf before the liberation, but by then I was chief valet. And what was I going to do? I stayed with my master because I wanted to. Everybody was happy and they didn't know why. Everything's so topsy-turvy now. I can't make head nor tail of anything. Shut up, you silly old fool. Ah, oh, Anya, my precious. Oh, darling, sit with us. Squiring the girls around now, you Peter. It's none of your business if I am, Leparkin. Mr. Eternal Student. <laughs> well, someone has to do the thinking around here. Now, now, temper, temper, Peter. Oh, leave me alone, will you, Leparkin, you lout? And why should I? What do you make of me out of interest, other than a lout? Go on, take a pop. All right. You're a bird of prey. Tell us something clever, Peter. Talk to us about the planets. Oh, no, hang on, Varia. Let's finish the talk we started yesterday about pride. Mm. The vast majority of us are fat and stupid and sad. So we must give up admiring ourselves and we must work. We'll still die in the end, fat and stupid and sad. Ah, but what is it to die, Guy? I mean, perhaps something of us is left behind, other than the five senses. Oh, you're so clever, Peter. Isn't he just? See, everything that we find impossible will one day be possible. But we must work hard. So very few people work hard. Educated people seek for nothing. They do nothing, are incapable of work. <laughs> they, they, they call themselves the intelligentsia and then smack their servants round the head. They learn nothing, they read nothing, and they do nothing. They talk of science and know nothing of art. Mm. They philosophize with solemn faces, whilst the vast majority live like savages, swearing and punching each other. Libraries and universities don't really exist. Nothing exists but dirt and vulgarity. This is boring. I'm boring. I'll be quiet now. Your turn, Le Parkin. I get up at five every morning and I work until it is dark. As I'm shifting my money around, I see the sort of people there are in this world. Very few are honest and decent. When I'm lying in my bed thinking of the enormity of things, I wonder why we are not more successful than we are. I think this is the reason. Oh, there goes Yuppie Hodoff. That's pretty. Well, the sun's set. It has. Nature is beautiful and indifferent. She animates and destroys. Oh, Uncle Gaia. <laughs> He's at it again. Waxing lyrical. When you do, better potting the red into the far pocket. I shall speak no more. Sometimes we put jam with the cherries. cherries and sugar. What was that? A cable in the mines, a long way away. Some sort of bird, a, a heron, perhaps? An owl? There's something upsetting about it. 
I heard it before the calamity. What calamity, Fierce? The liberation. <laughs> Let's go inside. Oh, Anya, why are you crying? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. What's that? Oh, there's someone there. In the darkness, who's there? Show yourself. It's the station, this way. Uh, yes, just um, follow this path. It will take you straight there. Much obliged, Gov. Here, Mrs. Ferrisick, <laughs> Get off her. Leave her alone. Are you all right, Varia? Here, here, have this. Oh, oh, oh dear, I've no silver. Here, take this. Oh, well, much obliged, Your Highness. Evening, all. <laughs> oh, Mama. There's nothing for the servants to eat at home, and you've gone and given a tramp a sovereign. I know I'm dreadful, but what's to be done? Well, Lepak, and you'll lend me some money, won't you? Of course I will, Ranievsky. Come along, Varya. Take the Parkin by the arm. I've settled it all. You'll make a splendid couple. Mama, you mustn't joke about such things. It's bad luck. Get thee to a nunnery, Varya. Go! Supper time. <laughs> Come along, Varya. Oh, Lepakin, my heart nearly jumped out of my chest when he crashed through the bushes. Gosh, he frightened me. Allow me to remind you all, the sale is on the 22nd of August and we still haven't come up with a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Trump, for scaring Varia. <laughs> oh, well, they, they've left us alone. Mm. <laughs> for once. Varia's afraid we'll fall in love with each other. Oh. <laughs> but we're above love. Aren't we, Anya? Anya, are you listening to me? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> we march towards the bright star that burns irresistibly before us, don't we, Anya? Oh, what beautiful things you say, Peter. Onwards, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have you done to me, Peter? It is as if I am bewitched. I don't care about the cherry orchard any more or what happens to it, and I used to cry when I thought of it. All Russia is our garden. We need not keep beauty for ourselves. Oh, yes. You're right. All your ancestors were surf owners. Do you think of that, Anya? You should. They owned living souls. Can you see them in every branch and bough of the cherry orchard? In every leaf and stem? Can't you hear their voices? Oh, stop it. You're frightening me. Well, your orchard frightens me. Before we can live in the present, we have to redeem the past. And not by swilling vodka. We have to have done with it. We have to work to redeem ourselves. You have to redeem yourself, Anya. I shall go away. Is that what I should do? I promise I will, if you tell me to. Throw your keys down the well and go. Yes, I will. I'm not yet 30, and what I've been through, the misery. But I can feel something good coming. I can. Oh, the moon is up. Why can't Varya ever leave you alone? She's not even your real sister. Oh, take me down to the river, Peter. It's lovely at night. All right. Take my hand. I'm a red-blooded male with unfortunately high blood pressure, Peter, but still, as strong as an ox. I think I'm descended from Caligula's horse. Can that be right? <laughs> ah, I'm broke, and all I can think of is money. Mm. 
Hey, what was that? Yes, broke. I'm broke. You do look a bit like a horse, Pishik. I like horses, they're jolly. There goes Mrs. Vary and the parking. Oh, do be quiet, Peter, you cat. Guilty as charged. I am a cat. Pisha, well, at the time you'd spent whining about money had been better employed, you'd be a wealthy man by now. Nietzsche says it's perfectly fine to forge banknotes. And when have you read any Nietzsche? I have to pay £31 by the day after tomorrow or my goose is cooked. I've scrabbled 13 here. Have a look. Oh, dear God. Peter, where's my wallet? What have I done with my wallet? Have you seen my wallet? Ah, uh, no, don't worry, I've found it. It's here in my pocket. Gosh, I, I nearly had a stroke. Oh, another one. No need to bring that up, old boy. Strong as an ox, me. Yes, you said. Oh, what a silly day for a dance. Pick a card, Rani Askia, any card. Oh, oh Charlotte, let me. Uh, what fun, I'll pick this one. Yes, yes, but don't tell me, Pishik. Shuffle the pack. Ein, zwei, drei. Now look in your pocket, Pishik. The eight of spades. <laughs> well, I never shouted, you minx. I think I love you. I'm head over heels. Oh, you silly old fool. You could be my granddad. Donkey, more like. Watch this, then. See my shawl. Are you watching my shawl, Peter? Mm -hmm. Look very closely. And... Ta-da! Oh, oh, oh. Anya! Where did you come from? Oh, Charlotte, you are clever. <laughs> I'm hungry. Anyone else want a sandwich? No? <laughs> and again, look at my shawl, Anievsky. Just my shawl. I, zwei, drei. Varya, oh, <laughs> my own daughter, as if by magic. What if my little Grisha? <laughs> no. That's all. <laughs> What a nymph. What a coquette. The girl's a genius. Let's see if she wants a drink. Hang on. Charlotte. Oh. Out. Where is Gaia? It must be over by now. I can hardly bear it. The house is sold. I know it is. But perhaps no one came. Perhaps no one did. Do you think that's it? I hope that's it. Gaia has bought it. I'm sure of that. What with? He has no money. Granny will have sent the money. She'll have put the estate in Anya's name, be in blood and all. She sent 1500 and 1500 only, Varya. Not even enough to pay off the interest. Oh. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Mrs. Varya Leparkin. Know your place, Peter, you stupid idiot. You can't have it both ways, Varya. How can I be a perpetual student and still a stupid idiot? Because you've been expelled twice. That's how. Oh, calm down, Varya, dear. Peter doesn't mean any harm. <sighs> marry Leparkin or don't marry Leparkin, we don't mind. We like him, but it is your choice, darling. He's a good, kind man, I think. Marry him, then, and I've done with it. How can I marry him when he hasn't proposed? Everyone has talked about it for bloody ever. Yes, everybody, apart from him. He makes jokes about it, all right? But he's not serious. He's too busy earning money. He doesn't care. I wish I had some money, and then I'd leave this place and hide myself away forever. If that will needs marry Varia, marry a fool. How horrid you are, Peter. Old, <laughs> ugly, and horrid. God, someone give me some work to do. I must work. I can't stand around here like this. Hey, Yepikodov has gone and broken a billiard cue. <laughs> Who said Yepikotov could play billiards? And, and who said Yasha could either? They're servants! This place is going to the dogs, so I'm going to the kitchen to work. I wish you wouldn't tease Varya so, Peter. Can't you see she's in agony? It's her own fault. She's a right busybody. She plagues us morning, noon and night. Us? Anya and me. Of course, there's nothing in it. We are above such 
tawdry things as love. We would neither of us stoop so low. You're down to the gutter with me, is that what you mean? Where is Gaiev? Is it sold or not? I can't bear it. It's a disaster. I think I'm going to scream. Say something, Peter. Talk to me. Whether the house is sold or not at this very moment is immaterial. The hammer blow will come. Brace yourself. For what? All before me is black, deep black. How do you know everything? Well, I know why. It is because you haven't suffered. Not really. Not yet. You shout onwards because you have no idea where you're going. Have you no pity? I was born here. I grew up here. My family has lived here forever. I love this house. Without the cherry orchard, it is all over. If I lose this, I will lose myself. Grisha died here. I can't bear it. I can't. I'm so sorry, Renescia. Say something prettier than that, Peter. Uh, I'm at a loss. This music hurts my head. I'm trembling. Look. Why can't I be quiet? I can't stop talking. I'm afraid of silence. I don't want to be alone. Don't go, Peter. I love you as if you were my own son. Yes. Why don't you marry Anya? Oh. But you must put your shoulder to the wheel, Peter. You must work. You do absolutely nothing. Nothing. You're like a leaf on an eddy. And that's not right. And do, do something about that awful straggly beard. <laughs> Gosh, I can't bear to look at you. Ugh. I don't care what I look like. Look at my telegram from Paris. I get them every day. The man who strung me up is sick again. He's begging me to forgive him. I should go to him, shouldn't I, Peter? Why are you looking at me like that? What do you want me to do? He's ill. I should look after him. I love him. My love for him has put stones in my pockets and I'm going to wade in over my head. No, don't speak. Shh. He's bled you dry, Renievsky. You are 26. What do you know about anything? You ought to be a man. But you're not. You should be in love with my daughter, but you're too smug to be in love. What does Anya say of me? At your age, you should have mistresses, lots of them. You should be ashamed of yourself. What does she say? You're a figure of fun, a circus freak. What does Anya say, You Ranievsky? ought to be in love. Oh, this is unbearable. Goodbye. No, stop, Peter. Come back. I was only teasing you. <laughs> Peter? Peter, what happened? <laughs> Right, what a moron. Darkness descends on the golden plains. My guitar whispers to you. Come out, my love, whoever wants you can fight me in a duel. The moon sets the sky on fire Come out, come out here Let me see you Listen to me sing And the clashing of my soul Sky on fire. <laughs> oh, poor Peter. Oh, oh. That's that's the oh, coming. I apologize. Are you all right? <laughs> Will you dance with me? Gladly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's all this then, Fitz? I don't feel very well yet. Ah, oh, that's because you're ancient. Back in the glory days, generals and admirals and barons paraded our young ladies around. And now it has come to this. The butcher, the baker. The postmaster. I was going to say the candlestick maker, oh. but never mind. Oh, way back when, 
The master used to give me sealing wax when I was feeling unwell. To drink? No, silly. To eat. I've taken sealing wax every day for 20 years. But today I forgot. Oh, why don't you just turn up your toes and have done with it? Oh. Danyasha, <laughs> wait up. Uh, you're a runner, Danyasha. I've always thought so. Oh, jam. Yes. Or preserve them with alcohol. Reduce them to syrup. Oh. Oh. I must sit down and catch my breath. May I sit with you, Fiers, darling? Oh. Mama, there was somebody in the kitchen saying the cherry orchard has been sold. Who? Where is Gaev? Gaev didn't take his coat. He'll catch a cold. Look at these youngsters. These saplings. These fresh green shoots. Yasha, Yasha, oh. go down to the kitchen and find out who has bought my house. Who has bought my orchard? What are you laughing at, Yasha? Go! Oh, the messenger's long gone. Yes, what will you do? Where will you go? I'll do whatever you tell me to, Manevsky. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. You look ill, Fierce. You should go to bed. Oh, yes, good idea. And if I go to bed, my lady, who'll keep everything on the straight and narrow, eh? We'd all go to hell in a handcart. There'd be anarchy. If you're planning another trip to Paris, Manevsky... I think I'll tag along. The people here are ridiculous. The food's shocking and the servants senile. Let's go. May I have the pleasure of this dance, Milady? <laughs> but of course, Pishy. <laughs> and about that 18 pounds. I take what I like and I like what I see. But that doesn't mean you're anything to me When will you understand what a mess I'm in? You, grinning and facile, full of sin Your dumb beauty makes me laugh Stupid, naive, mooning love calf. I have to get out of this crumbling wreck. Breathe deep and shuffle the deck. Find myself a rich old sow. You're far from what I need right now. <sighs> Anya told me I should dance, Yasha, but I need to powder my nose. And dancing makes my head spin. The postman just paid me an outrageous compliment. Am I blushing? Has my neck gone red? Oh, I hate it when that happens. What did he say to the postman? That I look like a flower, Fierce, if you must know. What's outrageous about that? Nothing. I'm going to pot some balls. Oh, wait, Yasha, say something nice. Say I look like a flower. You'll come to a sticky end, Dunyasha. Mark my words. Oh, perhaps I will go to bed. Oh. May I? May you what, Yepikodov? Um, sit down? No. Why do you look at me like I'm an insect? I'm not blind, you know. I wish you were. I face my misfortune with a smile. Leave me alone. I'm meditating. What are you doing lounging in here, Yepikodov? You're our clerk, not our guest. And Yasha, why are you sitting down? You were told to make up numbers. In the dance? Yes, in the dance. Where else? Go and join them now. Who are you to boss Dunyasha around? Who am I? I am the daughter of your mistress. You're not her real daughter. What did you say? You're not her flesh and blood. Not like Anya. You're nothing but a glorified housekeeper. I've got bluer blood in my veins than you do. Get out, the pair of you. Before I do something, I'll regret don't you talk to her like that? I'll talk to her as I damn well please, Yepikodov. Out! Oh, Varya's swearing now. Not very ladylike. Out! Out! <laughs> you hateful creatures! Oh, oh, pity on you too. 
who watch out the parking barriers on the warpath. Come on, Dunyasha, dance with me. Do I look like a flower? <laughs> Shall I go out and come back in again? Would that be better? Should we try that barrier? We could start again. What? No. Oh, sorry, Leparkin. It's just... They... Oh, never mind. Shall I talk to them, the servants? What? No. Thank you. But it's kind of you to offer. <clears throat> I'll sort them out, thanks. I'm needed downstairs. Where's Leparkin? Is the park in here? Oh, here you are. Where have you been? Where's Gaev? What took you both so long? Well, Gaev was with me. He's just coming. He's a bit out of puff. Is my estate sold? It was all over by four o'clock. We just missed the train and had to wait for the half past eight. Oh, you've been drinking the park and I can smell <clears throat> it. Brandy? Yes, brandy. <clears throat> Gaev, what happened? Tell me. I, I bought anchovies and herring. What a day. I'm appallingly tired. Come and help me change, Fierce. Ah, Gaev, my man. Pishik, how goes the sale? Was my cherry orchard sold? Leparkin? Yes. Who bought it? I did. <laughs> my head's in a whirl. I can't think straight. The other man was so tight, he only went up by five hundreds. I went up by thousands. Up and up it went, and now it's mine. Am I drunk? Am I dreaming? Hit me, someone! Who was that? Who was laughing? Was that you, Yasha? Don't you dare laugh at me! This is all mine now. I own it all. And my forefathers were flogged for this. I ran about in no shoes in the winter for this. My father wasn't even allowed in the damn kitchen. So don't you bloody well laugh at me, Yasha! Play! Play for me! Play as I chop the cherry orchard down! I'm gonna fill the place with villains! Let's get to it, boys! My grandson and great grandson and his great grandson will. Oh, it. <laughs> Forgive me, earlier. I forgot myself. <laughs> Ranievsky, please don't cry. Why didn't you listen to me? I told you this would happen. And now it has. Leave her, leave her be. Why aren't they playing? Play. Play for me. Here comes the future. Don't cry, Mama. It's true. The cherry orchard has gone from us. It's gone. But you have your life before you. Come with me. We'll plant a new garden somewhere else and you'll be happy, Mama. Happiness will seep into your soul like a sunset and my, how you'll smile. Come, Mama. Come. What was that, Yasha? Why did you give them money, Ranieski? You shouldn't have. I just couldn't help it, Gaev. However poor we are, we'll never be as poor as them. <sighs> Come and have a glass of champagne. On me. And that's it, Yasha. Top them up. I don't think I could choke it down, the parking. Where's my hat? Dunyasha! Where are you? No. Oh. Well, I won't either, then. What a pity. You drink it, Yasha. Someone should. All right. Don't mind if I do, the parking. <laughs> 
He has to. Uh, to... Oh, it's Kramer. No, it's not. Oh, it's cold in here. I didn't bother to light the fires. What's the point? 47 minutes till your train, Gaia. Thanks. It's time we're off, Gaia. Chop, chop. The carriages have arrived. Where are my boots? What have I done with my boots? Anya! I'll come part of the way with you and change your car cough. Why car cough? It's a hole. The demolition company is based there. Oh, we've been holding you up, have we? Itching to get into the ground? Have a glass of champagne, Peter, and you, Gaia. On me. Come on, down the hatch. No, thanks. I think I'll take a last look at the garden. So, you're off to Moscow, Peter? Yes, Leparkin, I am. Stop press, crank up the engines, term can begin. Peter's arrived. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot. How many years have you been at it now? Studying, I mean. I'll change the record, Leparkin. Let me give you a bit of advice. You've got to stop waggling your hands about. It is extremely annoying. But you want to know what the odd thing is? You have got artistic hands. However did that happen? I'll miss you, you crashing bore. Mm. I'll enjoy thinking of you up to your neck in mud, building your horrid little villas. Mm. And good luck to you, that's what I say. Oh, and to you, Peter, thank you for everything. Let me give you a bit of money for the journey, there's a good chap. Wouldn't dream of it. Oh, but you're broke, I know you are. I was paid for that translation, remember? Where are my boots? Up uh, here, there, here. Catch! What? <laughs> Steady on, Varia. No, these are not mine. Come on, Peter. I made 4,000 on the poppies alone this year. Let me give you a bit, eh? I have money coming out of my ears. Come on, man to man. My father was a chemist. And mine was a filthy peasant. What's your point? It proves nothing, is my point. If you offered me 10 million, I wouldn't take a penny. I'm a free man. You have nothing that I want. Onwards, comrade. Will you reach your destination, Peter? Yes, I will. Or die trying. I suppose we should be setting off. Here we are, yakking away and life is passing us by. I need to get back to work. It makes me feel good. It makes me know why I'm here. God only knows what most people get up to. Not very much, it seems. Did you hear? Guy F's got a job in a bank. <laughs> Not that he'll stick it out. That yeah. man's as lazy as the day is long. The pub. Mama says, could you ask your men to stop chopping down her orchard? You could have waited till the family had gone, surely. Oh, dear God, yes. Sorry. I'll speak to the foreman at once. I, I don't know what's come over him. How inappropriate. I'm sorry. Tell you, Mama, I'm sorry, Anya. I shall help pack the carriage. Morning. Disaster zone reporting for duty. Uh, has Sophia's been driven to the hospital yet, because of? Oh, dear, I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Yasha? Are you talking to me? I should think so. I told him to this morning. He's on his last legs. Well, please inquire, Yasha. I'd like to know for sure. Look, I just said, didn't I? <laughs> Better off sending him to the knacker's yard. Turning him into glue. What do you reckon, Yasha? Put an end to him. I should be so lucky. You see? You see, Yasha? What did I say? I'm so damned clumsy. You put me out of my misery, why don't you? Disaster zone doesn't quite do you justice, does it? All right. Steady on. Strength. Yasha! Oh, there you are, Yasha. Not now, Dunyasha. I need to talk to you. We haven't much time. Look at me. Oh, I can't bear it. You're leaving me and you won't even look me in the eye. Oh, what's the use of blubbing, Dunyasha? <laughs> Stop it. Here, have some champagne. 
No? Oh well. Bottoms up. I'll be back in Paris in a week. Then I'll be able to breathe again. I can't stand it here, Dunyasha. Do you get that? It's a stupid backwater. If you were a good girl, you wouldn't have to cry. Will you write to me? No, of course I won't. I might die of misery. No, you won't. Get off. There's somebody coming. We need to go, Agnieszka. Who smells of fish? Probably me. Adieu. What a rum cove that Yasher is. We should have been gone by now. Well, this is it, house. This is it. By spring, the whole orchard will be chopped into kindling. And the house will be lumps of tile in the mud. Oh, Anya, darling, slow down. Oh, God, you're beautiful. <laughs> you take my breath away. And happy. Hmm? Are you happy? Yes, I think I am. We're starting again, aren't we, Mama? Mm. Anya's hit the nail on the head there. Now the axe has fallen, I feel like myself again. Plenty to look forward to now that I'm a banker and all. Red in the middle pocket, as they say. And Ranievsky, you look just the ticket. Got some colour back in those cheeks. Oh, yes, it's funny. I do feel a bit better. Ah, oh, Leparkin. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ranievsky. I, I didn't order them to chop the trees down quite yet. I made them stop. Take my things, will you, Leparkin? Yasha seems to have disappeared. We must be off. Darling, Anya. You'll be all right whilst I'm in Paris. Oh, as soon as I've passed my teacher training, I'll get a flat in Moscow and you can live with me. Oh. We'll read ever so many clever books together, won't we, Mama? Yes, my angel, we will. <laughs> I found your hat, madam. What's that, Charlotte? You looked at me and I could not speak. I could not speak because I could not speak. And your hot fat tears rained down on my cheek. I was put aside and left alone I cried and cried but I was left alone I cried and cried What about me? What about you, Charlotte? I'll find you something, Charlotte, a position. Here, help me with these. Everyone's jumping ship. <coughs> water! <coughs> water! I hardly breathe. I'm so unfit. Pishik, are you all right? We haven't got any money, Pishik, if that's why you're here. We're all stony broke, apart from the parking. It's the parking I'm after. I'm out here. Uh, here's the 40 I owe you, the parking. You'll get the rest shortly. Oh, wonders will never cease. Where on earth did you get it? Hang on. Let me catch my breath a minute. Oh, I've got a stitch. Oh. And some ruddy Englishman found some sort of white clay, I think they said, on my land. And here's for you, Ranievsky, another 40. Oh. <laughs> Didn't I say I was good for it, you goddess? <laughs> oh, that's better. Yes, I'll uh, take a bit more water, if you please. Uh, right, I'll push off. <laughs> Time waits for no man, as they say. I've got a few more deliveries to make before sundown. I'm going to Paris. Now? Again? Surely not. We've only just got you back. Oh, my. Where's the furniture all gone? Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. No, it's all right. It's, it's all right. All good things must come to an end, including me. And when I die, say, that silly old donkey is dead. God rest his soul. <laughs> Lovely weather we're having. Adieu, sweet lady. Adieu.
Oh, we must go. Come along, Gaia, Anya. Shoo. Shoo. I'll check the horses. Where's Fierce, Anya? Oh, at the hospital. And Varia, she looks dreadful this morning, all sad and thin. Whatever will she do with none of us to look after? Why don't you just marry her, Lebarkin? She loves you and you like her well enough. Why do you pussyfoot around one another? Yes, let's do it now. <laughs> this instant, if you leave before I ask her, I'll never manage it. <laughs> Varia! Varia! Leave all that and come here! Good thing I bought champagne. Oh, oh it's all gone. Yashu, was that him? Oh, the greedy pig. You trot along, Anya. We'll leave Le Parkin and Varia to it. They don't need an audience. Wherever can they be? What are you looking for? What? Oh, nothing. I'm losing my mind, I think. <laughs> What's your plan when they've all gone? Me? Oh, I'm going to housekeeper Yashnova. But that's 50 miles away. What on earth have I done with them? Look. I'm catching the train. And... Yes? I'm leaving Yepikonov in charge. Disaster zone? Yes. For the old weather we're having. Minus three. I believe. The thermometer's broken. I think it's colder than that. Actually. Huh. Coming! Hang on! Someone needs me. Here I come! Goodbye, Maria. All the best. I'll be all right. I have my work. Put on your things, Anya. We're off. We're off? Finally. Oh, my darlings. Uh, yeah, we're cut off. We need you to lock up. Oh. Right, you are. Darlings. Oh, my. Shtum, Uncle Gaev. Keep shtum, all right? One last look at the walls. At the windows. Yeah, I sat in that very window. Watch father cross the lawn when I was six. Everyone out? Everything out? Yes, I think so. You lock up, Yeppy Godoff. Leave it to me. Oh, look! Uh, Peter's boots, they were under the suitcase. Peter! Master Guy has a sure to have put the wrong coat on. These silly, young, green things. (sighs) 
My life has gone by as if I'd never really lived. I think I will lie down now. On the floor. There's no strength left for anything. There's nothing. Nothing. I'm done. In The Cherry Orchard by Anton Chekhov, Ranievsky was played by Emma Fielding, Leparkin by Neil Dudgeon, Anya by Lucy Doyle, Varia by Joan Iola, and Gaev by Dominic Coleman. Peter was Nicholas Prasad, Pishik Tony Turner, Charlotte Alexandra Konstantinidi, and Yepi Kodov Matthew Wilson. Dunyasha was played by Safran Kumba, Yasha by Liam Lau Fernandez, Fierce by Sean Murray, and The Tramp by Lewis Bray. The Cherry Orchard was presented in a new version by Catherine Tozer with music composed by John Chambers. The director was Toby Swift. Thanks for listening to Drama of the Week. Subscribe on BBC Sounds and never miss an episode. Why is it that some people pretend to support a football team? It's important questions like that I'll be looking to unravel with the help of top experts, psychologists and some big sporting names in my new podcast, Don't Tell Me The Score. We'll be dissecting sporting themes like tribalism, the power of belief and the art of resilience to uncover important answers about life and the world around us. Forget the results, tactics and cliches about two halves. This is a sports podcast the likes of which you've never heard before. Subscribe to Don't Tell Me The Score with me, Simon Mundy, on BBC Sounds.